Hi, my name is Steve Kinney, and I'm the head of front end engineering at Temporal. And this is a course on Vite. In this course, we'll learn how easy it is to get up and running with Vite with almost no configuration whatsoever. As we work through the course, we'll discover how powerful and extensible Vite is for optimizing static assets. We'll also look at using plugins to add new and unique features. We'll learn how to actually process files that aren't even JavaScript and pull them into our application and use them with almost no effort. So take what you've learned in this course and experience what it's like to enjoy using your build tools to help you move faster instead of slowing you down with configuration. So let's make a banner JS. That seems like a good name for the file. And I can do export const add banner. No one asked me yet, but uh, if you're wondering, generally speaking, as they just, that's a lot. Um, let's do document dot query selector and we'll do that content. Um, I almost always use like export const instead of export default. One is because like for stuff like React, for instance, uh, if you give the thing a name first, like IntelliSense is better about doing the auto importing. And then two, it's like easier to just add more things. But the nice part is on those dynamic imports, um, if you export default, then like it's initially called default, and then you've got to rename it to whatever you want. And so if I export the constant, I get the right name. But if you want to export default, go for it. Uh, I just choose not to. And then we'll do dot text content equals that text, right? Something super simple. And what we're going to do to the counter is we're going to say, um, we do this in the render where we'll, we've got the current count. Um, and we'll set that and we'll say, if the count, do we want to do less than zero or greater than 10? What makes us happy? Let's do less than zero. All right. We'll go with that import. And I called it in this example, I called it banner.js. And then we've got that add banner in there. Is that what it says? Let's see. Yep, we've got add banner. Uh, IntelliSense for the win. And then now we have that file. I could say add banner and we'll say you're below zero and we'll have that place. And what I want you to see as we do this is uh, when the file gets imported, right? So that's what we're gonna like watch for here. Uh, so we'll go ahead, we've got hello from index.js. And let's go ahead and let's give it a shot where I'm going to pull up the network tab here. And we should see it in that case where if we increment, file's not loaded. I want all, all things. And let's clear it real quick. Increment, and then as soon as we decrement to below zero, then it's dynamically lo loaded when it's needed, and we pull in all of the assets. Right, and it's from that initial, from that counter JS, and we get that all for free. And as we go to build it, you'll see that that is all kind of taken care for us. We'll actually do it from in here. Um, I've got that preview server going, but we'll do npm run build. And now you will see that it breaks out into three files. So if you do need to like, you know, if you're like, hey, you know, we talked about what is the upper limit for the bundle, um, you know, I, like if you you are like I do want to start splitting this out, um, and I need to I want to have some opinions on when it happens and why it happens. Right, those dynamic imports will basically take care of everything else for you. Uh, just you know, as as the, just to kind of illustrate the difference here, let's go ahead and we'll just say um, we'll do it at the top of the file like we would normally do. And like I said before, if you're using a router or something like that, a lot of this is being taken care of for you by you know whether it's your routing framework of choice is effectively doing this under the hood. But this is like how it works and how if you need to have opinions about it in your build process to split stuff out, uh, it all works. So now if I pull it up here and I do an npm run build, uh, you can see I only got two files now. Because it knew that, hey, I'm not going, now ES modules by out of the box would try to do two requests and in development, it will theoretically like try to like have those things in place. But, um, to cut down on the number of uh, requests, it will bundle this all together into one file. Because it's like, if you instantly need this file, right, it will kind of be put together in one chunk. So you get some control out of that, but not necessarily from configuring Vite or anything along those lines, from just writing your code with asynchronous fetching. 
um, will do the trick and everything else is effectively taken care of for you at that point. What Image Tool gives us is very simply the ability to do something like height equals 400. Right, and now it will resize the image for us. This is not, oh, just it crushed down, right? Like this is literally the image was resized on the fly by our build tools, right? And we can verify this by doing, we'll do an npm run build. And you can see before uh, the image was like five kilobytes and now it's, or five megabytes, like 5,000 kilobytes. And now it is 31. Right, so we're able to kind of resize it, and that will be that is now the uh, the one that is produced is a JPEG, and it is much smaller in this case, and we didn't have to like go in there and resize it ourselves. We can add other options too, right? We could say and I think it's format equals WebP, and then let's do another build here, and now you can see that like it has actually like also change it to a different file format as well. That's a little bit more performant for the web. Um, and I believe this is the one where we can do the, um, and for a second, I'm just gonna console log this. Do console log image. And at first we should see the URL. And we'll go ahead, yeah. And you can see that it's like, a proxy URL at this point, right? Like when we do the build process, that's when it's gonna actually like spit it out into all the different versions. This is quote unquote the URL um, for our image. And part of it is that if we wanna use something like source set and bring in multiple sizes, right? It'll actually, this URL will respond with everything that we kind of need for the different versions. Um, but this is effectively the URL we're using. And then like, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, I've never actually tried this before, so we're gonna we're gonna live take a look if this works the way I think it's going to work. Yeah, and so it is It is the image of that URL being served by the Veet server, right? But you can see it is the smaller one based on our like preferences at this point. Um, and then we can do, I believe I'm doing this memory. This is mostly me showing off, so if it doesn't work, it'll be the second time it didn't work, it'll be great. Um, so we'll go back, and yeah, so I did that one more query from as metadata, right? And as you see, like now instead of getting just the URL, I'm actually getting a whole bunch of data about the image that I can use in my JavaScript code. And then at build time, like we'll have all of that information as we go and we spit it out. So like, for instance, at this point, I did set the height to 400. Um, we do have that source. Now if I wanted to use it in the tag, I just, instead of, putting the image, I have to say image.source because now this is an object instead of just a string. Uh, but I can get the width. So if I was using like next like image where I want some width and a height to put the placeholder in there, I now have access to this, right? And I don't have to like go measure it and guess and then resize the image. I have all of this basically for free. Um, and now like all those things of like, okay, like I do want to make sure I'm using, you know, and I can have multiple formats and do all those things, right? We can actually take a look um, at the, I think of, yep, yeah, that's another example of all the metadata in this case um, that we kind of saw. And there's a whole bunch of other directives which are super cool and like just kind of show you like what you might need to do, you know, depending on your use case. For the most part, you know, getting into a smaller size um, and then like uh, maybe turning it into a different format uh, that works for the way. I mean, you could literally, I can import multiple times here. And I, so I could say, uh, we can turn this one into, call this one WebP. Uh, and we'll get, yeah, we'll, eh, we'll keep the metadata on for a second. But then theoretically, if I also wanted like the URL of just the JPEG one, I could have I can import it again without changing the format. And so if I wanted to have like fallbacks that we see a lot of times in like the picture element, right? I can actually generate multiple versions of this image, have URLs, and then as we'll see, I'll kind of instead of calling import WebP, we'll call this one JPEG. Right. And this is one of those things where I would probably do it once in like some kind of reusable code. Like either if I'm using React, I would do it in a React component, Svelte, I do it in a Svelte component, where now I've got an image tag, it'll automatically, I'll give it the source, it will then try to generate all the different versions, so on and so forth. So we can see JPEG uh, as well. And then uh, we should see both of those loaded, but then the, the more interesting part is when I go to build it.
Let's do npm run build. And now you can see it spit out both the JPEG and the web. And I'm getting like basically any file format, if I need multiple sizes for multiple purposes, I can literally, I can even give it a stack, I believe. I can do, uh, I believe I throw this and we'll say, give me a 401 and an 800 pixel one. And then you can see that now we've generated two of them. And like, I can reference both of them and we can actually see, that server's definitely running, there it is. Um, now I've got, you know, the two web P ones in this case, right? So you can see that like web P before was a single one, now it's an array of two images, right? Um, and so I've got the one that's got the width of 300 and the height of 400, the width of 600 and the height of 800. There is a fun plugin called uh, Vite plugin DTS, which will basically for any TypeScript, uh, scan through it and go ahead and um, like create the DTS file for you in that library. Uh, so I just uh, npm installed as a devel uh, development dependency uh, this Vite plugin, Vite plugin DTS, and to no one's surprise, we can go pull it in. I'm just you know this is a, it's a default export, so I can call it. We'll say import DTS uh, from Vite plugins DTS. Great, we'll put that in there as well, uh, and it takes some options. Uh, there's a whole bunch. What I really like is um, to, uh, what's the one that I'm looking for? Let's see, I'll start typing. Um, I don't want to roll. Let me see. Plugin options. See, sometimes this TypeScript stuff is neat. All right, so you've got, you know, root we want to start. I want all the same things in here as well. Um, what I want, I think I want um, insert types, entry, roll up types. Um, do the declaration only. I'm trying to remember which one I want. Uh, well, let's just run it and see what we get in the beginning, and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, so, run build. Uh, and so you can see at this point, it did create. Uh, really everything at this point, right? And like, we could we could deal with that a little bit. It's not really bothering. We've got this main.dts. We've got actually, in our components, all the DTS files for everything in this case. Um, my components aren't in there though, which is kind of like a little bit squirrely. Uh, there is an option in rollup to do, uh, I believe it goes in the output where we could say, preserve modules is true. And you can kind of see how that changes it. I know it's conflicting with another option, but that's actually not the one that I care about so much. So if I run it with nothing, we see that I get like everything as if I was building like a full app. I don't need the Vite SVG from the React template in my library. Unless you need it, but I don't, right? Uh, in this case, I've got like, what I really want to do is say like, okay, we want to put it all together, but we want to just say what's in source components. If I run this, you'll see that I'm a little bit better Right, it didn't pull in all of the other stuff like the application and everything that I'm running like this code in, um, but it does like include that SVG again. And so the way to handle this is pretty simple, which is we can go in here and we can basically in the build options we can say like copy public directory false. Right, and this you know if you didn't want the public directory in your regular app that would do the trick too, but like in this case we won't. We don't want anything from in there. And so now we've got the style, we've got the various files, we've got the button.dts in here as well. Um, and we've got a bunch of that in place. Now, if you did want to also build the app, you can have two Vite configs and like you can do a dash dash config on the Vite command and say, okay, for the library, we want to build this. Um, for the regular app, we just use the regular base one. Like you can have multiple Vite configs and it will totally work. Uh, it was just like, you know, um, if you did MPX, uh, Vite, config, and in my case, I only have the one, but like it will run that configuration. Uh, that was for the, we do it for build. If I had a different configuration for the app versus the library, we would get those in place as well.